of Fierce, where we celebrate entrepreneurs carving new paths as they fulfill their mission to make our world a better place. Today, I'm very excited to have a dear friend and a client of mine from Beauty by Bling, uh, Charlene Keo of Charlene of Charlene Keo Designs. Uh, actually, it's www.keodesign.com to be exact. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I want to share with you, my audience, um, my testimonial to Charlene, and then we're going to go through some of the factual uh, information uh, on her background and how um, thoroughly um, capable and seasoned she is as an interior designer. Now, I was looking at LinkedIn, um, updating my LinkedIn page, and I it was overviewing some testimonials, and this is what I wrote um, for Charlene. Very seasoned in the business. Her approach is thorough. She is not afraid to think outside of the box or roll up her sleeves to get the job done. She has a knack for providing solutions to challenge spaces and a keen eye to spot perfect ingredients to complete any space. Keo design equals flawless beauty with ease and effortlessness. So that's Blaine's, Beauty by Blaine's take on Charlene <laughs> Keo's designs. Um, and I just wanted to share with you, my audience, uh, some of the factual um, points. Um, Charlene graduated from Pratt Institute and has been an interior designer since 1974 and always wanted to do design since she was a child. She went to school to learn about it and has been doing it ever since. Um, one of the things she loves doing is fixing interiors to make them work better. Redoing a space um, that she grew up in all the time gave her that background and that knowledge to be very efficient in that capability, capable area. Um, during the first part of her career, primar primarily she was doing commercial design, ranging from corporate interiors, law firms, banks, to jewelry showrooms, funky record company interiors, and art galleries. <laughs> so very diversified um, background, which is great uh, for anyone who is looking for an interior designer. She's also known for unusual mix of materials in a non-traditional way. And this is one of the reasons why I was attracted to her, her aesthetic in interior design. Um, because as you know, our show is all about entrepreneurs carving new paths to make our world a better place. She's also won the AIA Excellence in Interiors Award, which was no surprise to me. <laughs> and she's been published in Dwell Magazine, Interior Design Magazine, Design Times Magazine, and Leisure Homes. Now, her work has also been featured in several books. One of the most recent is Asian Influence, Architect and Design. If we can get a, can we get a close-up on that? That's amazing. And, and the, the, um, the spread in that was just so beautiful. It was really clean and minimal, which I love, and um, very open and spacious. And when you look at it, it looks like, you know, she just came in and just did it. Like, you know, you don't see where the challenges were. It's just seamless, and it's seamless beauty is what I refer to it as. Um, she started her own firm in 1988 after leaving the corporate world and decided to concentrate on residential interiors. And there was a very creative opportunity which allowed her for a closer interaction with her clients. She not only creates the interiors, but does furniture and product design as well. So without further ado, I would like to introduce you to Charlene Kia. Welcome, Charlene. Thank you. It's so good to be yes. here. The last time we, we got together on TV was the Martha Stewart Tall Show. Oh, that's right. This is <laughs> great. That was so much fun, wasn't it? It was wild being yeah. in a room full of people your own height. Or taller or than taller. us, right? Yeah, oh, it was wow. And waiting outside in that line in that cold. Oh, my goodness. It was, <laughs> it was freezing. Hysterical. But it was fun, right? It was fun. It was really, it was really fun. great. I'm so excited to have you on the show. It's, I'm delighted to be yeah. here. This is great. This so, is I mean, great. I know, you know, we, we, we want to get all the good, juicy facts in. So we're going to get right into the meat of okay. it, right? Um, the first thing I'd like for you to share with my audience is a little bit about your design philosophy, because I think that that's really something that makes you special and kind of like, you know what I mean, like separate from the masses. <laughs> well, hopefully. Um, really, it's to me, it's all about designing individually for each client. Each client has their own ideas and their own lifestyle and their own way of looking at things and their own color choices and mm -hmm. their own everything that they've either traveled or whatever. Right. And it's, everybody's an individual. And I strongly believe that everybody, that should be reflected in their space mm -hmm. and not in 
some cookie cutter design that, you know, a lot of, there are some designers out there that are very well known and every design is very cookie cutter. You right. know it's, it's their there. design, right. you know it's right. there. And for me, it's all about reflecting the client. My friends tell me there's a thread that runs through my jobs mm -hmm. and they know that I did it, mm -hmm. but uh, it's, it's really about, you walk in that space, it's their space, and I want them to feel absolutely 1,000% comfortable mm -hmm. in that space yeah. when I leave. Exactly. And not be afraid to do anything in there. And, it, and they really need to live there, they need to enjoy it, their home needs to be their refuge. Yes and um, it needs to energize them. So mm -hmm. when they come home, they can just sort of shut out the, the, the world and say, okay, I'm home, I can relax and, 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 right. and be here. It's interesting because you, you and I, we're so synergistic, and even when I'm working with you as far as like wardrobe and mm -hmm. image and things like that, our philosophies synergize because the, like as a design consultant, you know, I get called a lot of times to go into a space because the person, first of all, didn't realize the importance of hiring an interior right. decorator. Right. So they just tried to do it themselves and you know, put, paint the walls and put in some furniture. Right. And then they're, they're, not, they're not wanting to stay home. They're always out. Or they feel drained when they get home and they right. have a hard time leaving the house. Exactly. So I, I, I really, it's exciting for me to meet you, you know, and to be able to refer you because a lot of times we could avoid all that, that we exactly. do if we do it right the first time. That's right. And a lot of people, I have some clients that come to me and they've started the process and then they get stuck and they mm -hmm. don't know what to do. And it's really about creating a balance in that room through the architecture and the, the interiors and, and the shapes and forms and the colors and the texture and objects and, yeah. and everything. And if it's not balanced, you don't quite know why, why it's throwing you right. off, but it is. Yes. You know, and then you, you're, you're just not quite settled in your right. place. And when it is balanced, you just come in and you just go, oh, mm. you know, and relax. That's, that's and when you know you've arrived when you can come in and do it. Absolutely. <sighs> yeah, exactly. And it, it, and it really involves, you know, talking about my design philosophy, it really involves, a collab in my opinion, a collaborative effort with uh -huh. the client. Um, and, and they may get heavily involved or not as involved, but it, you can't just go in and create something for someone without them being involved right. in it. And Do you it, work with um, consultants? Because I know, like, sometimes um, with my clients, they'll hire an interior decorator, mm -hmm. but they'll have me there as a consultant sort of like to... to verbalize what it is that they can't verbalize? Do you do? No, actually I don't. Um, wow, okay. What I do is I go through a whole programming process. Okay. And every client, everybody has a definition of a term. And let's say I say modern, they say oh, modern. Okay. What does that mean to them? I don't care what it means right. to me. I, I need to know what it means to them. Right. And I give them like homework and I say go and pull up images out of the shelter magazines or oh. out of now my website or wherever and use that to tell me what your term means. If you're traditional, what does that mean to you? If you're modern, what does that term mean to you? Once we establish that term, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. it's easy for me. Right. You know, because I want to know what they mean by it. Right. You know, because uh, otherwise it doesn't work. So the, 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 um, the communication is very important. There's a lot. Absolutely. Of yes. That that first programming meeting is probably the most, most important, important meeting of the entire job because okay. I do a lot of listening mm -hmm. and a lot of asking of questions, mm -hmm. and from that I really get to understand the client. And it may take more than one session, right. and yeah. it may just be hanging out and getting right. to know them yeah. as a as a as a, an individual, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, it really is the opportunity for them to have a creative opportunity, a creative input, yeah, input yeah, totally. and also it's it's a it's a creative opportunity and for them to take advantage of, because they're using me to get into their head right. and translate them as an individual into their three D mm -hmm. environment. And, and I so, think that already that attracts me to your philosophy more than someone coming in with this name that's going to do the place up the way they think it should look, and then you're supposed to be, oh, okay, um, so-and-so yeah. did my apartment or yeah. my house. I mean, it's like you're exactly. living in someone else's exactly. space. Exactly. Right. It should be your space, and it should reflect you. Absolutely. That is my philosophy, period, and a sentence. I love it. <laughs> I mean, you got it in one sentence. I love it. It's amazing. Okay, audience, you heard that, right? <laughs> now, so. let's talk a little bit about style. Okay. The design style, because I think that's really phenomenal. Uh, it's hard to define. You get involved in everything. I, you're, you're I do absolutely you're everything. Hands on. I'm yeah. hands on. Yeah. Um, I'm down there picking the <laughs> limb off the floor sometimes. Um, 
again, the design style is individually for each client, but the, I, I think the thread that runs through my projects is that I, I have a very clean style, mm, be it traditional, yes, be it modern, yes. be it transitional, be it whatever. Uh, it is there, mm -hmm. and it's all about balance, and it's all about creating that. But um, I think that's also the thing about you that's really great, too, is that in your design style, you know who to pull in to work with, to right. realize. Right, absolutely. That's very important. Absolutely. You, know, you have a really yeah. great team. I have a great team, and, and it, it runs from you know the fabulous contractors to incredible artisans mm -hmm. to... Uh, people that create uh, products with me, for instance, rugs or fabrics or whatever. Um, uh, just anybody, oh, and, and I'm only as, I always say I'm only as good as the people I work Absolutely. with because if if they can't produce. It that the makes me look bad. Right, 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 right. uh, and then over the years, I guess you've kind of gone in and out, right, with different group of people, and you've kind of yeah. Like, I mean, people kind of crystallize and yeah, people like evolve that. and people change mm -hmm. and things happen mm -hmm. and companies close and companies mm -hmm. open and fathers pass things down to sons mm -hmm. and maybe the son isn't mm -hmm. as good as the dad. Yeah, and, you yeah. know, you find that out the hard way, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're talking about challenges. Like, what are some of the challenges that you? had to, you were up against it, you kind of like, well, obviously you've overcome them, but it's right. good for our audience to know that also, because like my main mission for the show is of course to encourage people to go for their dreams, right? Mm -hmm. And to really um, take those entrepreneurial endeavors off the shelf, dust them off and go for them. So mm -hmm. it's important for our audience to know, okay, yes, there are challenges, but it, did that stop you? No. And how did you deal with it? Every day is a challenge. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> it's a challenge getting a project done. It, 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 design should be fun. Mm -hmm. People should have fun doing their interiors. It, it it's handling huge amounts of people to get a project done. Right. There's so many people involved to to pull that team together to come in and and make it happen. If one person messes up. Right. <laughs> it throws the so whole thing off. Right. So it's a challenge just to get the job mm -hmm. done. Exactly. And uh, it's a challenge to make sure that it gets done on time, mm -hmm. that it comes within the client's expectations of budget, okay. right. and um, and with the within the client's expect expectations of quality. Right. And. I'm a stickler for quality, mm -hmm. and I'm a stickler yes, for are. on time, and yes. I'm a stickler for budget. So, if any one of those things is affected, it, it, throws, it, it, off. it yeah. throws it off. Oh, wow. And uh, you know, but I'll I'll hang in there till the bitter Damn. end. To you, I can testify to that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be down there picking lint up off the floor yeah. and tweaking a corner and scraping. It, mm -hmm. You know, if the cleaning people even didn't get, get something right. off the floor, exactly. I'm in there with a straight edge straight edge razor getting it off the floor. Exactly. That's what I love about That's you. the unglamorous part right. of design. Well, that's, that's the, our, our audience needs to know that, right? The other thing I wanted to, to um, share with our audience is, you know, um, being able to adapt to the times. And we right. had this conversation when the whole Wall Street fiasco happened and, right. like, you know, how do we keep ourselves active in what we love to do? Right. And, of course, you know, I came up with the wardrobe makeover right. and, and working with the wardrobe that you already have right. and recreating right. looks. Which was great. Right? Like. And, and, and you... you he does great work. 